push, 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 release. Good morning. It's now Wednesday morning and joined from a very cold Burton on Trent. So after a very mild November up to now, it's now finally hit the cold snap. So I've been waking up to a frozen <laughs> car in the morning, uh, frozen roads and streets. So this will be nice and enjoyable. Get the layers on, got leggings, a couple of layers on and a jacket just on a nice easy run this morning so what we've got coming up this week i'll check in with a few clips from i was at loughborough on monday did my last um, run testing with mccall in my lab there so it'll be good to see the results come out of that in the new year uh, last night's run was a nine mile with sam so i'll update that on the, the roundup and yeah looking forward to head to top of 10k on sunday so this morning easy run we're looking to do some form of session on thursday and then give my legs a bit of a rest going into the 10k trying to hit a pp so race week looking forward to getting it done one push 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 Checking in with the usual weekly roundup. So starting with Monday, um, on the evening of Monday, I went to Loughborough University as part of the strength, te strength training testing that I've been doing and the effect that that has on endurance runners. So this session was a big session. It was around 15 miles in total. So I started off with a warm up, some strength tests. So there was a standing jump and a seated calf press. Then over in one of the other labs, there was a single leg press on the leg press machine. I then hopped on to a 90 minute treadmill run, which was set at around 6.47 a mile pace, which is around about a marathon PB pace. So it was pretty tough going to do 90 minutes at your marathon PB on a Monday night um, in the middle of a, a training block. And then at the end of that, I did five minutes at 6.15 a mile pace, which was 6.15 is a pace I can normally hold for well, over 10k really um, but at the end of a 90 minute run after the strength test too, five minutes and I was done on that so that was a pretty heavy session on Monday. Going on to Tuesday, so Tuesday evening I did nine miles with Sam Harrison so that was a steady run um, but we did have a situation with an aggressive bulldog and its owner um, at one of about mile eight, I think it was, if I was checking the splits, um, which we did have to stop for a few choice words with the owner 
and then and proceed to run in that eighth mile and it was actually a 625 mile as opposed to the rest of the run was around seven minute miles and um, so it just did give us a bit, bit of a jump on that mile and brought the average down a little bit for that run um but no one was harmed all good um just want to make a special mention to sam for um the weekend before that she broke the park run world record at long eaton with a time of 1537 so already an impressive achievement it's even more impressive that this was just half of the session that she did that was for 5k tempo at the start of the session and she finished it off with four lots of four minute reps afterwards so so my thoughts on this are that whilst park run it is an inclusive event and for everyone regardless of the time there does have to be a benchmark set at some point and hats off to sam for going and setting it with that time and for inspiring other park runners at the same time there so well, well done again to sam Wednesday morning now, so that was an easy 30 minutes um, around the washlands, which have pop popped a few clips in of that. Thursday was then a rest day. I did intend on doing a session on either um, Thursday or Friday, um, but I rested Thursday. Didn't have a great night's sleep Thursday night. Um, was up about sort of three or four o'clock in the morning, which then led to me being really tired on Friday. So I had intended to go and do a session Friday lunchtime, um, but I was really tired and it did feel like I was gonna fall over when I went out running, especially going up a hill to start with. I think I was just, <laughs> looked at my watch, it was about 8.30, nine minute mile pace. My legs weren't really working very well. So I just turned around and headed home. At, I got to about three quarters of a mile, called it a day, one and a half miles for the whole run and just went back. Um, got changed and carried on with work um, and that was it for Friday I mean sometimes you're not going to feel great and just forcing yourself to do a session probably isn't the best idea so I was um, still happy with my decision I made then I would have liked to have done a session on Thursday or Friday but um, as things turn out I, I made the best decision at the time and um, rested up there then Saturday morning was a five mile shakeout run. Um, so I did, did do the same route as I intended to on Friday. I made it up the hill this time. Um, just did an easy run, but popped in a few strides. So sort of some 15 second to 30 second bursts in there just to get the legs turning and ready for Telford on Sunday. So I'll check in later with um, an update from Telford. So how did we get on on race day on the Sunday? So Telford 10K, my PB going into this weekend was 37.15, which I set around two years ago and didn't actually get an official chip time as my chip didn't work on one of the races that happened over COVID, but I know it was a 37.15, um, but I'm quite happy to say that I reduced this by 34 seconds to 36.41 and got a really unexpected and massive PB there. I would have been happy if I was under 38, I was telling my friends at the start, and anywhere close to a low 37, I'd have been over the moon with. So to get 36.41, I was, I was absolutely buzzing with that, really pleased. Um, going into what I wore in the race, I wore the Alpha Flies to race in, which I'd only recently been running in the last couple of weeks, really. And I think they made quite a big difference, really. I could, especially like going up the hills, um, felt a lot bouncier, a lot more return out of the shoe. And I think that probably added a couple of seconds um, without me actually being any fitter really. So it'd be interesting to see how I went if I wasn't wearing those shoes. Um, in terms of how the race went, I felt really comfortable up until about mile five. And then I just hung on to a decent pace from there in the last couple of kilometers there just to, just to hang on and try and have a decent finish. I was sort of calculating it in my head that if, as long as I didn't blow up, I'd be on for a big PB. So I did, didn't want to take any rests and just saw it home nicely there. So I, the good thing about that is I still think that I've got quite a bit of time to take off that. So I think I could get into the low 36s, maybe even break 36 um, with the right sort of training next time I come to do a 10K block. So really successful training block there. Um, just like to do a few shout outs to some, some of the guys that I know who did the race. Um, so first of all, to the three guys that I coach. So that's Robbie, um, he did 36.27, which was a four minute PB. 
So he he hadn't been under 40 minutes before, although he had been through um, 10K splits in the recent Derby 10 mile in around 38 minutes. So we, we knew that he was on for a big PB, but to get 36.27s at a cracking effort from Robbie. Um, also Damon did 41.19. So I know Damon's been doing a lot of strength work and not necessarily the, the running specific work um, which will get him towards that PB. But in the last couple of weeks, he's been back on the running and down to 41.19, which is very close to his PB. I think he'll be very close to breaking 40 minutes. Um, in a few months' time, he was try another 10K. And again, last but not least, is um, Stuart Beckett. So he did 57.56. So having not previously broke 60 minutes, and from where he's come from the start of the year in January, um, where he's struggling to run a mile, um, couldn't make it up to 5K until about sort of March time, I don't think. So his progress has been um, fantastic, and he has showcased this on his YouTube channel, Beckett Runs. So for anyone wanting to check that out, it is really a good good story, and he's had a, a fantastic year, which I've. Um, it's been great to be a part of in the second half of that that year. He has also done a great race um, recap video of Telford, so make sure you check that one out. There's also a few club mates um, from South Derbyshire Roadrunners who ran. It was good to see them. So Ash Erdman did 32.30ish. Big uh, well done to Ash, who went in that second wave of the Elite Women's Race, and he was the only one of us not to get chicks. So well done to Ash. Chris Pearson, he broke 34 minutes for the first time in a massive PB, so he did 33.59. Chris is one of the strongest runners um, in our training group, runs very well at, at all, all distances and all races there, so well done to Chris. Jamie Green was next in in 37.46, which he's timing these PBs brilliantly. He's done a one second PB. And he does assure me um, that he will be breaking 37 minutes, but it won't be until he's about 80 if he keeps going on at this rate. So well done to Jamie. And last but not, not least of the South Derbyshire's, Kelly Knight did around, I think it was 41.10, cor correct me if I'm wrong. And that was very close to a PB for her. So everyone had fantastic runs, really. Um, another mention to Sam again in this video. So Sam Harrison won the race in 31.10, the women's race. She did actually go in the first wave with all the male elites and had a very good run there. So 31.10 and got a one second PB. So well done to Sam and well done to everyone running at Telford. And last but not least, a big thank you to all the organizers at Telford AC to put on that event with all um, challenging weather conditions, the postal strikes, and I, for one, thought it was a really well-organized event and I will definitely be back next year to have a crack at that 10 KPB again. Maybe even try and break that 36 minutes. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.